Hello again to this Audi Q7 oil leak project. Here I've uploaded a few screenshots from the parts I've used for this job. As I didn't receive all the parts at the same time, I didn't have the chance to take a picture of all of them together. After I ordered all the parts needed, they arrived starting from one hour to about two or three workdays. In the meantime, I washed and cleared the old parts that I had to use again. I'm putting all the parts back together, as this is the reversal work of the previous removal videos you might see. If you didn't get the chance to see them, please feel free to look them up in the video section of this channel. Throughout this repair, I replaced every single seal or o-ring that I came across, as it was on the part or between the part, just as an example, between the oil cooler and the carrier plate, between the carrier plate and the engine block, or at the intermediate woolen flange. You can at any moment rewind and pause the video and look up for a specific part number that you might need or you have to use in your repair job. In the process of installing all the parts back together, I ordered all the bolts new. For the oil cooler, oil cooler, carrier plate, coolant flange and other a few parts, I torqued them to about 9 newton meters, if I remember correctly. Between oil leaks and ordering parts, there was also an injector with a failed sealing gasket that we had to replace. Unfortunately, I didn't recall it. It is not hard to replace the front engine cover on this car, but it's a time-consuming job. As you've seen throughout the past videos, there are a lot of parts and pieces you have to remove from the car, starting with some body panels in the front, and after that would be the cooling system, involving different radiators, hoses and fans, and electrical wiring or harness, along with some AC cooling pipes and the servo steering hoses as well, but you might already know this. The bolts for the ceiling cover are also new and torqued to around 9 newton meters, if I remember right. You might ask yourself why I'm not 100% sure. Well, it's been a few months since I've done the work to the car and the time I'm editing this video now. Between them, there were a few other cars in the shop that had different torque values for their bolts. The car is nearly coming to its third oil change as for this moment. The first time we've changed the oil and all the filters was within this job. After that we've changed the oil again with filter right before the car reached 1000 km or 600 miles for the ones that are not familiar to the metric system. And again, you might ask yourself why would be that so soon? It's easy to understand. The first engine oil change was used as a internal engine wash, or to say it better, as a engine flush, to clear everything that might leak into the engine block throughout the work I've done, if I might say so. Now the car is running over 10,000 kilometers or 6,000 miles since it had the job done, with no oil or coolant leak, thank God. The shaft oil seal was installed directly on the engine cover, with much care as it was a sensitive part for known reasons. So after putting back the front engine cover, which was the main replacement part on this job, I turned my attention to the vibration damper on the crankshaft. Next comes the water pump or the coolant pump. I didn't order a new one because it was replaced about a year before. 
Sadly, there is no new seal to order separately. A new one comes only with a new water pump, so I had to use some good silicone to seal and secure the part on the engine for any leaks. Up next is the oil filter housing with flange. Here I've installed also the old part, with some new seals and some old ones, because some of them come only with the new part. But I put silicone again to engage with the block for sure. I recommend to replace the water pump and the oil filter housing with some new ones. But it was not me to decide this, it was the client's decision. The belt tensioner and uh, other cruiser pulleys that get run by the serpentine belt get also back on the engine. These parts were also replaced about a year ago, so they're good to go. A new part that I changed was a oil pressure sensor that is known to leak sometimes, so better to be safe than sorry. The front carrier for the radiators, also known as the radiator support, is one of the heaviest pieces to put back on. As you remove it completely, with all the radiators and the intercoolers, fans and other stuff from the car during this repair. New coolant and refrigerant is a must for this job. Everything worked perfectly. Car started right upon, that's also the rest footage that I bought. After a few minutes, hours of leaving the car to idle and run its smoothness, with no leaks or any problems, the next step was to engage in mounting the complete front end and lights so the car should be ready to go. Clearing fold codes came up next and the Audi Q7 was leaving our shop. I didn't manage to record the last part of this reassembly. No battery or the camera was not right here or the timing at any particular moment didn't match, so it couldn't happen. Sorry for this, I promise to do my best next time. Thanks for watching and we keep in touch for the next projects to go. God bless you.